What's more fun than Easter trivia? When you think you know the answer, shout it out. What's the most popular candy at Easter? A, chocolate bunnies, B, marshmallow peeps, C, peanut butter eggs, or D, jelly beans? Peanut butter eggs. All right, next question. How many marshmallow peeps are sold each year? A, 70,000, B, 700,000, C, 7 million, or D, 700 million? 700 million, that's a lot of sugary goodness. Time for another one. The second largest holiday for eating candy is Easter. What is the first? A, Christmas, B, Halloween, C, Thanksgiving, or D, Valentine's Day? Halloween, here's the last one. Most people eat which part of a chocolate bunny first? A, tail, B, feet, C, ears, or D, nose? Ears! Sorry, little guy. What? I can't believe it's almost Easter. Baskets loaded with treats, all the chocolate bunnies you can eat, dying a gajillion eggs, and finding that perfectly hidden grand prize golden egg in the egg hunt. There's so much fun to be had at Easter, and nobody knows how to have Easter fun quite like our masters of celebration, Graham and Reese. <gasps> Pink and purple, yellow and green, blue and orange. Reese, there's just so many eggs. Slow your roll, Graham. What's happening over there? I'm going through all my Easter eggs from last year to get myself ready for this year's extravaganza. Ganza, ganza. It's going to be the best. Oh, yes, it is. And since today is Palm Sunday, that means we only have one week to get ready. Correct a mundo, home bunny. The countdown to Easter is officially underway. There's so much to get done, and there's no way we're making it happen on our own. You got that right, little Grammy Cottontail. But that's why I'm calling on our friends to help. Now wait, before we even get started, we need to tell them what the extravaganza even is. Hold on, I have an idea. Got it. Uh, ready? <laughs> Graham, what exactly are you planning to do with that? Uh, just go with it, Reister Bunny. <laughs> okay. Now, as I was saying, the Easter extravaganza is a giant party that we throw to celebrate Easter. Yeah, yeah, Easter, woo! There are games, surprises, candy, dancing, and so much more. Say it again for the people in the back. There are games, surprises, eggs, candy, dancing, and so much more. Like that? Yes, just like that. Now, as we said before, there are lots of preparations to be done. And without you, it ain't happening. Uh-uh, no way, Bunny. So, it's time to kick things off by playing a game. Hop to your feet. Hop up high and duck down low to help the bunny dodge some surprising obstacles and get to the basket of eggs. You can take a seat. So fun, and we're just getting started. Check this out. Reese, I'm a cartoon character. Look at me. Whoa, look at you. Reese, we're both cartoon characters. Yeah, we are. This is how we're going to tell the story. Our story today is about Jesus and how he shows us his love for us. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. Whoa there, greatest showman. Can we get back to the story? Yeah. Jesus showed us his love by the way he treated the people who were around him and also by the miracles he did while he was here on earth. 
Let's just say Jesus was a pretty awesome guy. Yeah, he was. Everything Jesus did got the people talking. They wondered if Jesus was the king God had promised to send to save them from the wrong things they had done. So, was Jesus like Superman and just didn't realize he had special powers that God would use to save the world? No, Jesus knew exactly why God had sent him to earth. He came to take the punishment for the wrong things we do and to give us life that would never end. That's more powerful than anything Superman's got going on. And the time had come for Jesus to do all that God had planned. He was on his way to the city of Jerusalem. And when Jesus got there, he rode in. On a motorcycle. Oh, oh, and that motorcycle had sidecars for his disciples. And the sidecars had sidecars. Uh, not quite. Uh, Jesus rode in on a donkey. The people knew he had to be the king God had promised to send. So they waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna! Which means, save us. A few nights later, Jesus and the disciples were eating a special meal together. Jesus knew this would be the last supper they would share before he went back to heaven. His very last supper? I bet they ate something really fancy, like chicken nuggets with every type of dipping sauce. Actually, Jesus kept it pretty simple. He thanked God for the bread, broke it up, and gave some to each of his disciples. Then Jesus thanked God for the cup and everyone ate and drank. Wait, Jesus, the one who came to save everyone, served his friends? Sure did. That's another way he showed love. And get this, after dinner, he also washed everyone's feet. That's kind of odd, isn't it? Well, I, I guess the disciples weren't expecting it. That's usually a servant's dirty job. That would be like Iron Man coming to wash my smelly socks. He's way too cool for that. I should be washing his socks. Jesus explained to them how washing their feet was a way he could show them love. That's some extravagant love. Later that night, they all walked over to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus spent some time praying by himself. As the night went on, things got really serious. Oh man, is this when... Yep. And... Exactly. How about you tell them this next part? Once Jesus was done praying, he was arrested by a group of guys that didn't like him. Like, at all. These people didn't like that Jesus claimed to be God's son. And they definitely didn't think he should be king. They made a plan to have Jesus put to death. Wait a second. Did Jesus do anything wrong? Nothing. This is not right! I understand how you feel, but the people insisted on taking Jesus before Pilate. Who put this guy in charge? Even though he agreed Jesus had not done anything wrong, he sentenced Jesus to death on a cross. Wait, what? Couldn't God save people from their sins some other way? No, remember? God had a plan. He knew that we would do wrong things. Oh yeah, like when I lie about brushing my teeth after Oreos. Yeah, sure, they're clean. Because God hates sin, but loves us, he planned for Jesus to take all the punishment for the sins of all the people in the world. Well, that's like so many people. Hundreds, thousands, millions. That's why his death on the cross was so painful. It was definitely the biggest way that Jesus showed us love. He willingly gave up his life so that we could be forgiven by God. It's the whole reason we have so much fun getting ready to celebrate Easter. Oh man, next week can't get here fast enough. Jesus loves me. There's no debate when it comes to how much Jesus loves us, and that's the best news ever. But it looks like Graham has a serious Easter dilemma. Ah, the great debate. Chicks or bunnies? Bunnies or chicks? I'm going to decide which one is the best right here, right now. Graham, it's the same recipe. Different shapes, same taste. Mmm, sugary goodness. I can feel the sweetness creating cavities in the depths of my molars with every candy-coated chew. Next up, the classic. Hmm, it's like sugar. Covering the marshmallow gives it a nice crunchy texture. Oh, 
and I'm getting some delicious undertones of sweetness. This is such a tough decision, but the verdict is. <clears throat> oh, right, sorry. They both taste exactly the same. Oh, really? What a surprise. Well, that was fun. And since they both win, they both get the honor of participating in my Easter experiment. Easter experiment? Yep, I want a warmed up, ooey gooey marshmallow peep fresh out of the microwave. Interesting, that sounds like a peep I might actually enjoy. But wait, there's more. Of course there is. What does the rest of this experiment entail? <laughs> Entail? I, I see what you did there. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> because bunnies have tails, and you're the Reeser bunny. Entail? <laughs> oh yeah, I totally did that on purpose. Oh, so you put the peep in the microwave until it's nice and melty. Then you put a chocolate bunny on top and sandwich it between two Easter cakes, like a s'more, except I call it Easter Sugar Explosion! Ask me why I call it that. Because it hits you with a big bang of Easter sweetness? I said ask me why, Reese. Okay, why do you call it that? Because it hits you with a big bang of Easter sweetness. <laughs> okay, now let's get this experiment started. Step one, gather supplies. Oh, all right, got him. Step two, put the peeps in the microwave. And then a minute or two should be about fine. Houston, we have a problem. Oh. them a little too long. Let's just, let's try again with the extras. Um, extras? <laughs> Graham, those were supposed to be enough for next week's Easter extravaganza celebration. What, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, we're in luck, Reister Bunny, because I know just the way we can collect some more. Let's play Spot the Peeps. Find all the peeps before the timer runs out. Count them as you spot them. Ready? Here we go. Time's up. Now everybody get on your feet. How many peeps did you spot? Six, nine, or 12? Do the pose that shows your guess. Nine. Great job spotting those peeps. You saved the day. Everybody stay on your feet. It's time to sing.
take a seat and check this out. Why did people wave palm branches for Jesus? Here's why. For God's people, palm branches had been a symbol of victory and triumph, starting way back when God freed them from slavery in Egypt. But now, God's people were looking to be freed from Roman rulers, and they thought that was exactly what Jesus had come to do. You'd think welcoming Jesus, the King of Kings, would be a big deal. Like red carpet, fancy chariot, confetti flying, trumpets blaring kind of deal. Right? Not quite. Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem by riding on a donkey. The people laid their cloaks down on the road and shouted, Hosanna, as they waved palm branches at Jesus. By waving these branches, the people showed that they believed Jesus would finally bring them the victory over Rome they'd hoped for. But God didn't send Jesus to lead an army and free them from governments or rulers. Jesus came to save people from so much more. Just a few days later, Jesus died on the cross and came back to life, defeating sin and death forever. It was the greatest victory of all time. Jesus made a way for everyone, everywhere to have a friendship with God again. Palm Sunday reminds us of just how much Jesus loves everyone, including you and me, and the victory he gives to us when we believe in and follow him. And that's why palm branches were waved for Jesus. Jesus loves me. In case you missed it, people usually eat the ears of chocolate bunnies first. Chick peeps and bunny peeps taste the same. Graham and Reese got ready for next week's egg extravaganza. We helped find nine peeps. Eggs can't play tennis. God made a way for us to be his friend. Jesus was the king God had promised. He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. People waved palm branches as a sign of victory. Jesus washed his disciples' feet to show them love. He was arrested but did nothing wrong. Jesus died on the cross to save us from the wrong things we do. And that's how we can know for sure that Jesus loves you and me. Let's bow our heads and talk to God. Hey God, thank you for sending Jesus to show us just how much you love us. As we get our hearts ready for Easter, help us to love others the way Jesus does. We love you. Amen.